and welcome. Thought I'd start this off from the parking lot. Kind of shows you the celebrity effect you sometimes get taking a wheel out to destinations normally reserved for mountain bikes. It can be fun at times, but most of the time it's my nature to try to keep a low profile, even though you're going to stick out no matter what on an EUC. Let's get started minutes later. Luton Park. So this is part two of day 25 of the road trip, which makes four trail rides in two days. Coming straight from Merrill Trail, less than 15 minutes away with most of my gear still on, I didn't really need any warm up so I could dive right into things. After this, I take a much needed four day break before my next ride, especially after a couple of wrecks today, but that's a super minor point. What I want to talk about today is trail flow, as Luton Park was one of the best places for beginner to intermediate electric unicycle trail riding that I've found anyway, so far. In other words, it's a fantastic place to learn pacing and flow on your wheel while on the trail. It also happened to be probably my favorite place to ride on this entire trip. Before I talk about the Red Loop, what makes Luton Park great is the great trail layout, the minimal elevation changes, and the well-maintained and groomed trails that sport a reasonably sparse amount of rocks and roots to add that obstacle trail spice that makes things fun. Starting with the layout, you basically have what they call the Blue Loop Circuit, which acts as both the main hub connecting each of the other five trail loops and as a double track beginner loop. If you're just starting out, you'll likely stick to this trail and the green loop, but if you're a little bit more advanced at trail riding, with no shortage of visibility, you'll probably use this wide track to carry speed and playfully juke around routes. Uh -oh. What's it doing? Yeah, it looks like I got a little bit lazy coming into the turn. I ran my outer pedal into the down tree. Luckily I was going slow enough where I was able to run it out and stay on my feet. These things tend to happen aren't really a big deal. But here I'm using the uh, easier lean and rock method just to get back into the feel of things. And that's the thing, for me, riding the wheel on the trails is about feeling, 100%. Of course, there's a learning period where you're actively using your conscious mind to figure out how to constantly move your body to not just stay upright on the wheel, but then later to not die as you navigate more and more difficult terrain. But over time, as you build up your subconscious reaction patterns, which is probably all about forming those neural pathways in the gray matter to get technical, your skill and ability increases to where you're not actively thinking about riding technique anymore or anything else. It's, it's really like anything else. You just get better with practice and time. Then after that, you're just reacting. You're just going with the flow of the terrain. Yeah, sometimes this happens too. You just gotta adjust the camera. No big deal. That's the benefit of being hands-free. So anyway, back to the flow. That's where you want to be, just reacting. Reacting, shredding, conquering. And on the red loop, yeah, it's pretty easy to reach this place. It has good flow. Even so, you know, a moment's inattention due to fatigue, a small miscalculation in the distance, or error in awareness of your total footprint, and uh, boom. hit that time. The ones you don't roll out of, they tend to hurt more. I can't remember if it was this one or wreck number four where I got a decent scrape on the elbow despite the elbow pads, but yeah, just goes with the territory. These elbow pads that I use are the soft D3O type, and I'm still not sure if I should switch to hard elbow pads or not. Anyway, after a hit like this, sometimes it's a little slower getting back in the flow of things, but still not too bad. Yeah, look at this guy. When it comes to overall speed on the trails, unless it's wide open and flat or a long climb, an electric unicycle versus an experienced mountain biker is uh, really no comparison. Speaking on the facts, you have one point of contact to the ground and a much smaller diameter wheel 
that you have to actively stabilize as well as propel forward. Compared to a much more stable two points of contact on a bicycle, with much larger diameter tires to roll over all kinds of obstacles that the EUC has to avoid, it's just no contest. It's kind of funny, I had no idea this guy was uh, right behind me at the time, but really no big deal to give some distance so each rider can uh, ride at their own pace. Yeah, another low speed wreck. I had to slow things down frame by frame just to figure out what happened. It looks like I was already leaned out into a turn and hit a small root, which that introduced enough instability to cause a momentary loss of grip. And it was this short loss of traction which began pointing my wheel in the wrong direction in order to continue to maintain the grip I needed to actually stay on the wheel. So basically this just forced me to catch or slow my momentum manually. And what that meant is what you saw, effectively leaping off the wheel and running it out. It's here I think fitness plays a big part in keeping this loss of traction situation in the uh, minor event category. So, you know, there's another reason to hit the gym. But, you know, in all seriousness, though, it's actually not a bad reason. Personally, I like riding EUC single track enough that resistance training to improve EUC riding fitness is actually not a bad goal and something I've been positively attuned to lately. And, just, and not just for the in-the-moment maneuvering on the trails or the endurance for long single track sessions, but also to speed up the healing as well as have some natural padding for harder wrecks. I'm definitely of the opinion that reasonably intense lifting sessions and reasonable training consistency for the purpose of muscle growth help in all of the riding instances I just mentioned. You know, if it seems like I'm organized here, that's probably because I have the benefit of narrating in this in post. My trail research prior to arrival consisted of glancing at mountain bike project for seconds before plunging into things. So if that sounds like you, then you can probably just get along just fine taking your EUC out and exploring places like this without extensive planning. This being my case though, I miss trying out the yellow loop this trip. You know, on the plus side, I now have an excuse to go back someday. Checking out the raw footage, my total filming and ride time ended up being around 56 minutes counting breaks. But I managed to cut things down a bit to try and keep it interesting. So I think I heard Chooch mention it before in one of his videos, but sometimes the wheel will catch you if you don't lose grip too hard when the trail conditions are loose. You know, when you think about it, for the gyroscopic sensors and motor to respond instantly like this, to keep you upright, you really have to admire the job the hardware and software design engineers did in creating such a fantastic product like this. You know, it really is a ma marvel to get out and pilot these uh, incredible machines despite some of the flaws that get much of the attention online. Orange Loop. You know, this one had a totally different feel from the rest of the trails at Luton Park. Despite the uh, condition of the dirt and the amount of obstacles in the path being pretty much the same as the rest of them, I think this was primarily because of the vegetation. Uh, you might have already noticed, but um, the forest encroaches on this trail a lot more than the other loops, limiting visibility, especially through the turns. It's for this reason that the trail flow is different and you kind of adjust naturally. You know, as things tunnel, speed drops and you become even more careful about pathing to dodge obstacles in the trail. While this type of trail isn't as fun as the more vertically dynamic and the superior visibility of the red and black loops, you know, it's still a blast and makes for good practice as well. This one in particular is good practice because you don't really have a combination of harrowing factors when it comes to low visibility and narrow trails. And one of those would be uh, elevation. If you're on a ridge line 
and uh, you're not used to trekking along a narrow path, you don't want to try that as your first trail. Uh, dumping the wheel off the side, that's a big, uh, that's a big no-no. So this type of trail, absolutely perfect for practicing the narrow corridor effect and how you're going to navigate and deal with uh, uh, the forest, the bushes, etc. as it encroaches on your path. And that's the thing, you can always improve your riding ability, your fitness, and your trail IQ so you don't wreck on the errant stumps sticking up through the bushes. So yeah, that was the other hard wreck. Definitely felt that one for a while. So right after that, it took a little longer to get back into the flow of things. But eventually I still get there. Anyway, no biggie. This stuff, it happens. That's what gear is for. That's what uh, the healing factor is for, you know? After this, you take it easy for a bit. And I had four days off after this, which I definitely needed. So. Anyway, a couple places in this trail where you're ducking trees too, but that's just part of the dynamic experience. And when you get through it successfully, it just feels amazing. It's nothing else like it. You know, after this ride, I talked to one of the local guys. I think he was in his 50s. And I saw him gearing up to take his one wheel out in the park. And he was telling me then about last season, how he broke his collarbone on the trail and how he had a long recovery afterward. The cool thing was it didn't let him stop him though. So kind of once you get it, you get it and you don't want to stop and I can definitely relate to that. What's funny was I even had an older retired guy come by later wanting to chat about the wheel as I was gearing down and from what he was saying it sounded like the one wheel rider was locally infamous for that and he thought that guy was crazy for beating himself up just to get back on it. You know there's... <laughs> Some people, they'll just never get it, but that's cool. Even though they've been around for years, I rather like that EUC is niche myself. Let's try it. All right, the black loop. This was the longest loop at Luton Park at two miles. And like the red loop, had what felt like fun rolling hills with good visibility while still being completely within the forest. I even ran into a deer on the trail and I just managed to get part of it on film. That being said, I was definitely starting to feel a bit dogged, especially halfway through this loop. You know, sometimes you get a second, third, and even fourth window on these types of rides and a good paced tune can help spur this on too. Throughout all my videos on this trip, you know, I always rock a Bluetooth speaker buried in my backpack, and this has been a huge asset improving my enjoyment at each destination. It's great as both a tool for this, as well as a way to sometimes let people know you're coming up behind them. Uh, like a lot of riders, I'm using the Liat dual axis knee pads, and they're awesome. They work, they do the job. Yeah, one of them will come down every once in a while. It's usually just one, though, not both at the same time. And uh, that's pretty rare. I mean, it's typically only when you're getting jostled around after a half hour or so. So, not a big deal to stop and readjust, restrap up. 
And uh, anyway, you know, in all my experience, they've not only held up to like multiple slides and abuse, but uh, haven't had any injuries. So they're definitely the way to go, in my opinion. Anyway, I think I'll stop narrating here. I got a little bit left of the black loop. Got a deer coming up. You might want to check that out. <laughs> Not that the deer is impressive, but it's a little funny. Did a little editing there. I was amused anyway. Hopefully you are. Let me know in the comments. Uh, like I said before, if you hit subscribe, you hit like. That encourages me to uh, make more videos and keep posting, keep improving on these videos. And I got some ideas of what I want to do in the future. I got a lot of ideas actually. I got a lot of content to get through. I got a lot of videos to process. It's gonna take me quite some time. This one was a long one, especially to cut down from 56 minutes. Took some doing, let me tell you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the ride. You wanna stick around? I got the end of the black loop, I got the deer. No more wrecks, but I uh, got a nice little jaunt through the green loop. And if I was still fresh at the time, I probably would have rode that one again. That one was fun. Anyway. All right. Like I said, hope you enjoyed the ride. All right. I got to take a break for a second. Holy crap. Look at this. Is that how a knee pad's supposed to be worn? I don't think so.
here. Made it. Amazing. Go back to the mobile blanket fortress.
back. Hope you enjoyed. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here?